welcome to technically our first ever tutorial on our YouTube page. My name is Reed and I am the owner of Palm Tree Shoe Productions. I have been planning to make some tutorials for some time, but this recent project that I've been working on is what inspired me. I was planning to start with something simple, but this project had very positive feedback and had a lot of people asking a lot of questions. I plan on making more of these, so if you like what you see, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and check us out on the web at www.palmtreeshoeproductions.com or at facebook.com slash palmtreeshoeproductions. The subject of this tutorial is complicated, so if you're unfamiliar with DaVinci Resolve's interface, I recommend checking out another tutorial to learn some of the basics of DaVinci Resolve before you jump into this one. What we're going to talk about today is vintage film restoration and coloring. Those of you that have ever worked with film know that old film is especially susceptible to degradation. In this tutorial, I'm not going to go over everything about digital restoration, but I am going to demonstrate how to color and clean up vintage black and white film. Without any further ado, let's turn this image into this image. We're going to get started. Uh, we're here in the edit page of DaVinci Resolve. This is version 15.2 and I've already uh, dragged our image into the media pool here and I'm just going to put it down here in the timeline. And it'll put it at five seconds um, depending on what your settings are. Uh, it doesn't really matter because it's just a still image but it gives us something to work with. So we'll jump right in here to the color page and uh, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. We don't need to see the clips because we're just doing this. We don't need to see the timeline either. But for this, I'm just going to put this sharpening tool on here just to give us a little bit more. You can see it already did something uh, over here. Um, we're just going to do just a little bit of sharpening on this real quick just to make it look kind of... Uh, a little bit more contrasty. You know, I don't want to mess with it so much because it gets so noisy really fast. You know, and this is a lower res image as well, so that's part of the reason why it's doing that. But uh, anyway, okay, I'm going to close this uh, open effects because we don't need that open. Uh, I'm going to do just a little quick correction here. I should also mention, too, I've unplugged my Tangent Wave uh, color control surface so you guys can see what my cursor is doing instead of me just doing it on the uh, doing it on the wave because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see what was going on. The image would just be changing. Anyway, okay, so brighten that a little bit. And you see there's all this artifacting here in the shadows of the image, and I don't really like that very much. And I want to, I don't want to deal with that uh, right now, so I'm going to actually kind of crush it a little bit just to get it out of the way. I think that looks pretty good. So if you want, you can take this node and hit node label, right click the node, hit node label, and I'm just going to put corrector on there so I'll know that that's what that is. And then we will hit Alt S or Option S for a new node. Now, you don't have to organize your nodes the way I do. This is just the way that I uh, that I choose to look at it. Uh, I kind of set it up on a layered kind of order so I know what I'm looking at. But I'll tell you more about that later. So we're on to node number two. Now what I want to do is we want to start coloring this image. So I'm going to start with the grass because grass is something we all know is green and it's something that uh, looks pretty easy to uh, pick out of this image here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to our window uh, panel and we're going to select this draw tool where we can actually draw the mask that we want. And this is not going to be uh, super clean, but this will just give you an idea of what's going on. So I'm going to set a point here, and I'm going to just kind of go 
along the edge. Okay, we've got that little chunk of grass isolated here. And we can click this button up here to show us what uh, we're looking at, or what is selected, rather, within our window. And as I said, grass is green, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab just this gain here, and I'm going to drag this kind of to the green. Green is yellow, really. Yeah, that looks about right. And, uh, yeah, so there's, that's the first part. We've already done one patch of grass, and it actually doesn't look too bad. Now, if I zoom in here, you can see that there's a pretty direct line, like it's pretty flat, where that uh, where I've isolated that grass. And I kind of want to feather that a little bit. So we can go down here to this softness thing, and I'm just going to grab this soft one, and I'm going to raise that up to about one. And see, that just softened that edge a little bit, and that looks a lot more... A lot more natural. Okay, <clears throat> so that node is good. Alt S, Option S for a new node. And we're going to take the same draw tool and we're going to zoom in here to this grass. And I'm just going to start going around here, grabbing all this stuff here. Perfect. If you always want to see, you know, what you're looking at, I do sometimes. This is a great little button up here, uh, your highlight button, just to show you what exactly you've uh, isolated. But yeah, we want to match that to the same as this over here, so let's just kind of eyeball it. And just kind of push it over here to this greenish-yellow again. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to grab the softness again, and I'm going to pull that up to about... 1.6, sure. And it's not perfect, but for this tutorial, you kind of get the idea of where I'm going with this. Now, this next part is going to be an interesting uh, thing because we have part of this building in the way. We have part of him and his bow in the way. And we have other stuff over here like trees and stuff like that. So we're going to hit Alt-S for our new node. And grab our pin tool again, and I'm going to zoom in here. So we can kind of see there's grass over here, but I don't know what this is, whether this is like stone or what. So I'm just going to plop this here. And so you've got the edge of the building here. And I like having architecture in the image because architecture most of the time has very straight angles, which is very easy to mask around. Um, but once we get up here, we've got a little part of his robe here that we want to get. And then we've got part of his bow. Now once you click this and uh, put, them all, put them all together, connect all the dots, you can actually manipulate these and move them, uh, and they all stay attached. So you can kind of get a better line of what you've got going on. Okay, same thing. I'm going to just push that into some grass kind of look. And already, that's starting to look pretty good. And a new node again. Same thing. We're going to grab the pen tool. And we've got this little tiny little piece of grass over here. Oh yeah, I forgot to feather the other one too. But we'll feather this one real quick. Then I'll jump back to this node and we'll feather that. We're going to add a new node. I'm going to drag this node down here because now that I've got my grass ultimately isolated how I want it, I'm going to highlight all of these. Right click. And we're going to go down here to create compound node. Bam. I'm going to hit node label. I'm going to name this one grass. And there's our grass node, which we might come back to and tighten up later. So the next thing I want to work on, um, let's see. I'll do his robe first just to show you uh, what that looks like. 
But it's basically the same thing. What we're going to do is we're going to grab our shape tool and we're going to jump right in here. Starting here and we'll just start going around. Now see there's an interesting thing I could do right here because all of this around this bow up here is connected technically to this and is going to presumably be the same color and same thing over here all of this area around here and up here uh, will all be the same thing. I could isolate all of this but what I want is I want control over each of their outfits so I'm just going to isolate his Thank you for being patient. And this is a very hurried version of this. Uh, I would be going a lot, uh, lot slower and a lot more uh, attention to detail here if I weren't recording right now. Okay, so we have that part of his coat isolated. Now, I did a little bit of research uh, on these guys and what they were doing and uh, students would wear blue so I want to make this look kind of blue but it doesn't need to be like vibrant bl bright blue it needs to be a little bit worn and kind of vintage blue almost say like denim you know so I'm gonna push my gain again into the blue realm here and that's pretty blue so I want it a little bit lighter so I'll pull it down to a little bit lighter Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm going to lower the saturation a little bit. It's like, yeah, 38, 38, 20. Why not? See, so that doesn't look too bad. And then we're on to the next node. And then the next node. <clears throat> okay, so already we've got the grass and his robe. Pretty cool. Now I'm going to skip doing a lot of this stuff. It's the same scenario this whole way around. It's very time consuming and it takes a really long time uh, to go through all of this because each of these sections, like in between these bows, like this section right here will be cut out, you know, or this section with this part of the wood up to here only, <laughs> you know, and then this part will be cut out and then this part will be cut out and then this part will be cut out and all colored you know according to whatever your taste is but the skin tone thing was the thing I was the most worried about when I was looking at this and this guy has the clearest face and arm so I wanna show you a quick thing about skin tone now how do you manufacture flesh tone from black and white uh, the answer is there's no good answer but we do know that flesh tones, uh, especially of Asian people, have yellows and reds uh, and oranges, you know, essentially in their flesh tone. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab my gain, and we're going to push it kind of yellow, and then we're going to raise it up just a dash into the reds. Now, does that look flesh tone? No, to me that looks pretty yellow. But when I hold my hand up against the screen in front of me, you can't see what I'm doing, obviously, uh, it's actually pretty close. So I'm going to just grab the lift here, and I'm going to lower that down a little bit. And uh, let's see here. I'm just going to open a new node real quick so I can see what that looks like. It's still pretty yellow. Uh, it needs a little bit more pink in it. I think So we'll move it even more up to the red. Now see, there we go. Now we're starting to get a little bit more flesh toned. Is that perfect? No. But we can adjust it more once we start seeing the other colors coming through. I'm just doing this to show you uh, how I go about it. So on this new node I'm going to do the exact same thing. Go real quick now so I can wrap this up. Now the same thing. I'm going to grab this and we're going to push it till we get something that looks kind of correct. Right about there. That doesn't look too bad, does it? <clears throat> okay, that looks better than this. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to lower the saturation on that one a little bit to kind of match. Yeah. 
Once again, not perfect, but that's how you go about it.